Hey, True Believers. Chris Mack coming at you with the new Teen Titans number two. Now, the original one of this, <laughs> if you try to get it, it's, it's kind of a pretty pity right now. This is the first appearance of Deathstroke. Thankfully, though, a lot of comic shops <laughs> are getting these reprints from DC called the Dollar Comics, which is really cool if you just want to read the story or if you have the original one and you just want to read copy, then this is definitely up your alley for a dollar because it's great to go back and read some of these milestone stories, especially to see the first appearance of Slade Wilson. And what's great is you open it up and right off the bat, check this out. This is the hive. You're the one called Deathstroke, the Terminator. You already know my name. Just like I know you bozos are stooges working for the hive. So let's cut out the garbage and get down to business. Who do you want me to kill? So right there, right off the bat, page one. Stakes, drama, everything you need for an awesome book right there. So we know something serious is going on. Now, before we go any further, the print date on this book was December 1980. This is Marv Wolfman and George Perez, writer, co-creators, layouts, which Perez doing the artwork, Marv Wolfman doing the majority of the story. Uh, Romeo Tangal doing the finishes, Ben Oda, letter, Adriana Roy doing the colors, and then Len Wine, editor. And for those of you that, that don't remember, Len Wine was the creator <coughs> of uh, Wolverine, and Swamp Thing. Do to do. And so Deathstroke, his MO is you know, you pay me up front and the hive refuses. So he goes to leave and they say we're not gonna let you leave alive. And so we just get these really cool uh, moments because I mean this you know, this is the introduction of a new character. So I love how organically Wolfman just shows how the Terminator is able to dodge just about everything and survive and uh why are the hive you know because deathstroke goes to attack the hive members after he gets through all the the cacophony of violence and they disappear so he's wondering what's going on he said were they trying to kill me were they trying to test me hmm well read the book to find out we're then introduced to this character named grant he's introduced in the last issue and that's was another thing is deathstroke he's not necessarily has a cameo in the last issue all it is on the last panel there's a vo of him saying uh, you want them destroyed very well the hive shall see that your wishes become reality and so that's kind of what leads into the beginning of issue two here now this character grant as you can see he's as you could if you want to read the dialogue here go for it but she you know she's basically uh carol i believe her name is saying that you're frightened me you're a little aggressive and you never told me about your father and brother. And she goes, you're gonna end up just like them. He grabs her, which is not okay. And he uh, all of a sudden gets hit. And we come to find out here comes Wonder Girl, Donna Troy, and Coriander Starfire. And at this point, you know, you see uh, Donna and Carol talking English, but Coriander's still doing this random language. At this point, Corey doesn't know English. You know, we've known her through the years now, we understand, but going back to when she first joined the Titans, yeah. And Grant is just sick of these Titans. He's, he's so frustrated, he wants to get Carol back, but he has this rage about him. But before we can go any further into this, uh, Kid Flash enters and says, we have an emergency. So they all go streaking through the night, and I like this how, uh, Donna says, I wish I knew what you were saying, Starfire. And then, okay, so Robin says, let's attack Titans. And this is what I love is how Wolfman organically, uh, it shows off each Titan's power. So, you know, Kid Flash races at super speed to clear a path into the pharmaceutical warehouse. Robin's acrobatic swinging downs two more costume fellows. Meanwhile, the changeling roars into action as only a shapeshifter can. Flying high, Princess, Princess Coriander unleashes a deadly starfire bolt upon an 18-wheel getaway truck. While the scientifically constructed cyborg uses his solar-powered molybdenum, <laughs> still reinforced muscles to wreak havoc upon his second escaping van. 
So this is kind of like how uh, Claremont and a lot of <coughs> older writers introduce heroes' powers. Instead of having like six million word balloons and dialogue boxes, they're saying, oh, check it out, it's ty you know, Cyborg totes Malo, you know, like a lot of these newer comics do, which, ugh, hurts the brain. This is very classic intellectual storytelling right there. Very great stuff. Now, skipping a couple pages, everyone thinks that Starfire is going to destroy all the evidence. They kind of find out that they're going up against these robots, and Robin's trying to scream, don't ki you know, destroy all of them, you're going to get rid of the evidence. And he's like, if only she could speak our language. If only we could talk to her. Now, before I go into the next panel, spoiler, spoiler, spoilers at this point. So if you don't want to be spoiled, either, you know, uh, <laughs> Crack down and get a, uh, an original copy of this, or go and get a dollar issue. But Chad says, says, quizzically, the young alien stares at Robin, sensing the tone, if not the exact meaning, of the teen wonder's words. Then, hey, hey, cut it out. Mm. <laughs> the teen wonder's protests in quickly. <clears throat> so this is the first kiss between Dick Grayson and Coriander. And with that... For those of you that were not sure how Corey knew English, that's how. She goes, hi, Robin. You know you're really cute. Uh, she talks, but how? Physical contact, kid flash. I simply absorbed your language. You had to kiss me to do that? Not really, but it was certainly more enjoyable this way. So, uh, again, after the battle, Wolfman goes back. And again, I know I'm using this word a lot, but organically shows each hero's temperament. So you kind of see Robin's a little more direct because he was raised by Bruce Wayne. You know, Flash is, you know, he's more the studious one because he's a college student at this point. And then um, Cyborg, you know, uh, Donna, Donna's saying that her she threw her back out. And he goes, just relax, I can fix it. And she goes, you're in a medicine, Cyborg? Nah, I was an athlete. I know I'm throwing out joints when I seen them. <laughs> and then Gar... He's always been the flirt, so he's trying to get Corey to kiss them. He's like, listen, I know French. What about German? Chinese? And then Coriander, because this is her new home planet, she's a little ignorant, so she needs to learn. But I like how she goes, no, English will do fine for now. Maybe some other time. So again, we just see how everybody works together. And it, and it, and it just it's great because there's no you know, pokes, or, you know, or, or any type of uh, negativity here. It's just fun comic reading and seeing how these characters work together on essentially their second mission. And now the Deathstroke, the Terminator, is scoping the Titans out. And he's like, I understand why the Hive wants them gone. And then this is the first appearance of Wintergreen and how he's kind of essentially his... Uh, Butler, kind of like how Alfred is to Batman, Wintergreen is to Deathstroke. And they both very much have like a military background and different type of, I think his was the Marines, as were Alfred's was what, the, uh, Her Royal Majesty's uh, Air Force or something like that, I can't remember. Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, we go back to the Hive, and if you remember this character from a few panels ago, you know, we're introduced to him again. And this is where we first learn about Slade's powers, because he says we've figured out that the, uh, Human, you know, the human beings only use one tenth of their brain power. We've learned that the Terminator increased his capacity to ninety percent. So he kind of has like that super soldier serum, like Steve Rogers does, but Deathstroke uses it for evil. And then we cut away to uh, Raven, who's always been one of my favorite Titans. And this is all future buildup for another arc, which I don't want to get into or give away. And then we cut to uh, Victor Stone. Now, back at the warehouse that we were just at, Robin saying, hey, can your father, who's part of Star Labs, speaking of which, Star Labs, that is an acronym. So if you guys want to know what it is, read the book. It may be one of our future trivia questions. <laughs> Robin's asking Vic if uh, his father can help them analyze the robots that, were, that they were stopping. And again, it shows how Victor has very much a whole lot of animosity against his father. So, you know, uh, right here he's talking to him. He goes, this automaton is damaged beyond any hope of repair. Yeah, I bet you're real choked up, Dad. Come on, level. 
You don't give a hoot about nothing but yourself. You never did. If you cared, Mom would still be alive, and I wouldn't have become this monster. Victor, that was an accident. Accident my behind. You and your crazy science freaks got a hold, got off on playing God with less little people. You never thought of me as your son, just as some kind of personal physics experiment. Now, Cyborg storms off, very angry. <coughs> and uh, you find something out about his father and what uh, Victor's power is kind of, you know, uh, what's that word called? Doing to, to the dad. But we'll not get into that. Instead, here's the first appearance of the Ravenger. And he's ready to uh, destroy Cyborg. So if you want to know who the Ravenger is, you're going to have to read the books. I don't want to give that away because that very much ties in to the book. Now, while Victor is dealing with all this, uh, the Titans are chilling at Gar's mansion because he's apparently like richer than Bruce Wayne, as Robin states. And uh, Victor comes in and, st and speaks of the uh, stakes that are going on. Now, check this out. Deathstroke takes the Ravenger away after the Ravenger dispatches Victor, who's the cyborg. And the Hive, which is another acronym if you guys need to, you know, take a look at it. That might not also be another uh, future trivia question. Just let you know. But it looks like the Rav uh, Deathstroke's going to be taking the Ravenger under his wing. Now check this out. For the cost of one minor operation, we receive the Terminator services free of charge. And then he's like, two against the Titans. Who do you think will be victorious? Number five, you already know the Terminator has never failed. And so at this point, the Ravenger just goes through the Titans like, you know, such fine tissue, just boom, whack, smack. And they're all trying to say, this is kid play Ravenger, you need to go home. And he's like, no. And uh, the one thing that I kind of skipped over here is Deathstroke, when he takes the Ravenger, he tries to explain to him that, okay, you have powers like me, but they've not been fine-tuned. So the more that you use it, the more it's going to feed off your body. But the Ravager doesn't believe it. He's just saying, you know, I can't believe I used to worship the Terminator, but now I'm just like him. Now, with that said, I don't want to give too much away. But does the Ravager actually kill the Titans? Well, I guess you should probably read the new Teen Titans number two because this was a dramatic stake raising you know emotional comic book like every time I read it this is probably my third or fourth time reading it because it's that good I get a little choked up the same thing with what happens in the Judas contract which we will go back over I gotta re-upload that video because again we lost a lot of stuff so oh let's not go into that so if you guys have enjoyed this comic book Please first support your local comic shop and see if either A, you can get your hand on an original copy, which I am forewarning you, it's going to be pricey. Or see if on their uh, dollar rack, if they still have <laughs> one of these copies, which is really great to have for a reader, one that you know you can read and just enjoy. And if you've enjoyed this review, we'd definitely appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. It would definitely help the club channel more than you possibly know, especially since we've had to start over. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little Titan bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys can come to the channel. And we'd love to have a dialogue and hear your feedback down in the comments below or on our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description below. So again, with all that said, I hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, true believers.